Pumps require some common and some specialized tools in order to properly maintain and repair them. These tools can be categorized into Measurement and Repair Tools Pump maintenance requires precision measuring devices to ensure that the close tolerances necessary for proper operation are maintained. Some measurements are also used to detect pump wear and to indicate when certain components should be replaced. In this section the following measurement tools will be described. Calipers Feeler gauges Dial indicators And micrometers Calipers are precision measuring devices that can be used to measure inside, outside, and depth dimensions, with a high level of accuracy. For pumps, they are primarily used to measure shafts and bearings to ensure that the components are within the manufacturer's tolerances. They can also be used to measure the thickness of various pump components such as gaskets. There are three types of calipers. Vernier scale calipers. Dial indicator calipers and digital readout calipers. The simplest type of caliper in construction is a vernier scale caliper. This type of caliper has only one moving part, the jaw. The caliper is scaled to measure to a very high level of accuracy, down to a hundredth of an inch or a hundredth of a centimeter, or 100 micrometers. It has the advantage of being very accurate and durable. Vernier scale calipers can have one or two scales, with major units of either centimeters or inches, or as in this case, both. There are eight parts of a vernier scale caliper. 1. Outside jaws, used to measure external length or diameter. 2. Inside jaws, used to measure internal length or diameter. Three. Depth probe, used to measure depth. 4. Main scale, in centimeters. 5. Main scale, in inches. 6. Vernier scale, in centimeters. 7. Vernier scale, in inches. And 8. Retainer, which is used to lock the moving jaw in place. The vernier scale is read by adjusting the caliper on the item to be measured. Once the item to be measured is placed between the jaws, look to see where the zero tick mark line falls. In this example, it falls between 2.4 cm and 2.5 cm. Always take the smaller of the two numbers, which in this case is 2.4. The hundredths of a centimeter are read from the vernier scale, by finding the line on the vernier scale that lines up exactly with another line on the main scale. In this case, the fifth line on the vernier scale, lines up with another line on the main scale, which indicates 0.05 cm. 2.4 is added to the 0.05 to give a measurement of 2.45 cm. A dial caliper is equipped with a dial that indicates hundredths of an inch. Whole inches and tenths of inches can be read directly from the main scale on the caliper as described before, while hundredths are read from the dial. Each full rotation of the dial is typically one tenth of an inch, although that can vary by manufacturer. A dial caliper has the advantage of being easier and faster to read than a vernier scale caliper. The digital caliper is equipped with an electronic readout that displays the entire dimension that is being measured. This caliper is the easiest to read, and can be easily switched between English and metric units using a units button. It also has a zero button. The zero button has two main uses. It can be used to calibrate the zero position of the caliper prior to use, to make sure the caliper's reading is error-free. The zeroing feature can also be used with the jaws at any point on the scale. This makes it easy to directly measure differences between objects that have approximately the same size. On the other hand, with the dial and vernier calipers, a measurement of each item would have to be made, and then subtracted from the base measurement to find the difference in size.
calipers are used to measure the following. Inside dimensions. Outside dimensions. And depth dimensions. Here is a demonstration of using the smaller jaws to measure the inside dimension of an object. First, press the zero button. Then place the jaws inside the object to be measured. Using the wheel, open the jaws, of the caliper until firm contact is made with both sides of the object. Read the dimension from the caliper. It is recommended to make at least three measurements at different object widths or diameters, and average the readings. The larger jaws are for measuring the external dimensions of an object. To measure the outside dimension, open the caliper larger than the item to be measured. Using the thumb wheel, bring the jaws, into firm contact with the item. It is recommended to make at least three measurements at different object widths or diameters, and average the readings. The depth probe is used to measure the depth of a hole, or any other dimension that the jaws, do not fit into. To measure the depth of a hole, extend the rod at the end of the caliper, until it makes firm contact with the bottom of the hole, while holding the base of the caliper in firm contact with the rim of the hole. Read the dimension from the caliper. Feeler gauges are small strips of metal of varying thicknesses that are used to measure small gaps. The thickness of each strip of metal is marked on it. To measure a gap using a feeler gauge, slide different strips into the gap until one fits snugly. Then read the dimension marked on the gauge. If no single feeler gauge strip can be found that fits a given gap, several feeler gauges can be stacked until the right thickness is obtained. A dial indicator is a precision measuring device used to measure very small distances. It is used in pump maintenance for checking rotating components for alignment and roundness. The indicator is usually mounted to the case of the item being measured by a magnetic base. The magnetic base is a device used to attach the dial indicator to the ferrous component that is being measured. It is constructed of two blocks of iron, with a material that is not magnetic, such as brass, or aluminum layered between them. A hole is bored into the block, and a strong magnet is placed in the hole. It has an on, off switch on its front. When the switch is in the off position, the magnetic field is directed into the non-magnetic material. In this case the base does not stick to any ferrous component it is placed upon. When the switch is turned to the on position, the magnetic field is directed into the iron blocks and causes the base to be strongly attracted to any ferrous component it is placed upon. The magnetic base has arms with adjustment devices that allow the dial indicator to be positioned at the ideal location for performing the needed measurement. Dial indicators are utilized to measure the alignment and roundness of rotating components. The indicator has a small rod extending from it. It also has a dial that measures to an accuracy of thousandths of an inch, or one hundredth of a millimeter. The outer ring of the dial can be rotated to allow the user to zero out the instrument after contact is made with the component being measured. The indicator is attached to a base that holds the instrument in place. The rod makes light contact with the rotating component that is being measured. As the item is rotated, any out of roundness in the component will cause the needle to move and indicate the amount of variation. To use the dial indicator, it must first be attached to the base. Depending on the manufacturer, this can be accomplished in various ways. Most commonly, the back of the indicator will have a tab that is attached to adjustment devices on the arms of the magnetic base. Once the indicator is mounted on the base, the base is attached to the case of the component to be measured. The arms are then adjusted until the rod of the dial indicator makes light contact with the component being measured. Once the dial indicator is in contact, ensure that it is perpendicular to the component. 
Any deviation from a perpendicular position will cause inaccuracies in the reading. Once the dial indicator is fully adjusted, zero the indicator by rotating the dial until the needle is on zero. To read the dial indicator, the component to be measured must be slowly rotated. As the component rotates, any out of roundness will exhibit itself as a perpendicular movement of the dial indicator's rod, which will cause the dial indicator needle to move accordingly. Since any shaft or component will have some degree of out of roundness, the manufacturer usually provides a tolerance range for the roundness measurement. If the dial indicator readings exceed the manufacturer's tolerances, the shaft or part must be replaced or machined to specifications. A micrometer is a precision measuring device that is used to measure outside dimensions. It has two advantages over calipers. First, it is more precise than calipers. The second and most significant advantage is that the micrometer is equipped with a clutch device to provide for more consistency of the measurements by ensuring that the same tightening force is applied for all measurements. Before using an outside micrometer, the instrument must first be opened enough to allow the component being measured to fit between the jaws freely. The micrometer is then slowly closed on the object using the thumbscrew on its end until contact is made and the screw clicks or otherwise stops moving the jaw. The measurement is then read directly from the scale in a manner similar to reading a vernier, scale. See the section on calipers for more information.